So I'm going to talk briefly about iOS XE evolution because the, the software needs to evolve along with the hardware. So one of the things we've seen is we have evolved over the last few years from that classic monolithic iOS into a modularized iOS that's based on top of Linux. We started this evolution with iOS XT. We've continued this evolution with iOS 16. And one of the key things we've delivered in iOS 16 is, I would say, two elements. The ability to containerize applications alongside iOS. So this becomes really important when we start thinking about running security functions, other functions elsewhere in the network. Think about how interesting it is on your network device if you're able to containerize applications and run them on the network de device alongside iOS. There's a lot of good applications, especially around security, where you want to, to involve that, that application, that containerized function, as close to a source, as close to the, 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 you know, the uh, source of the issue as, pro as possible. So one of the things you're going to see when Muhammad comes up after us and talks about Cat9K and what we're doing there, is we dramatically oversized the control plane in Cat9K. We went to an Intel multi-core Intel CPU. We put in more memory than we need to run things like you know spanning tree and routing protocols and stuff, because we know that the future is we want to be able to run containerized apps on the device. We've also gone to this concept of a database. So what the database is really there to do is to checkpoint uh, functions inside the device. So for example, if I need to restart a process, the process doesn't necessarily have to relearn all state of the network. It can store it in the, the internal database and just read it when the, when the process restarts. So is the direction on that exclusively containers or is the KVM functionality still in there? So it, containers. So the KVM functionality we had continues, but we think containerized apps are much more lightweight and are really the way to go on this type of platform. And it's going to stay LXC, LXC or are we looking at Docker as well? LXC for now. But we're open to doing other things. It's an Intel CPU, so we could potentially do whatever we want. On there right now, LXC is the way we're going. Okay. Um, so uh, other things you see here is we have big focus on programmability. We're going to talk a lot about this later when we talk about automation. But we need to enable this in the infrastructure. Now, I guarantee that all of you guys have used an API in our devices. The API that we've used is a CLI, right? The CLI is an API in a device that's optimized for human-to-machine interaction. It's great for that, right? It's quite good for that. But it's very poor for machine-to-machine -machine interaction. We change something on a CLI, it breaks your expect scripts, right? Then there's problems with that. So this is why you see an emphasis from us on Yang data models, NetConf, RESTConf, because we need that machine-to-machine -machine proper communication channel to be able to cleanly do automation in the environment. So big focus on that. Containerized apps, talked about these before. We think this is become, going to become very important as we go forward. The other thing that's really interesting is if you take a look at Cat9K, and I'm, I'm sure Mohammed will re-emphasize this point, we run the same binary iOS image across all of our Cat9K platforms. We have never, ever done something like this before. We run the exact, not just, it's not just the same image number, it's the same binary file that runs on a stackable, that runs on a chassis, and it runs on a fixed aggregate. So I download one and I put them on all of them. Yes. So same connection binary. Say, it, say it again. I download say one and put them on all yes. of them. Yes, you download okay. one. You qualify, and most important point is you qualify one. Yeah. And then you put in all of them. Okay. Isn't that cool? That's phenomenal. You like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot of hard engineering work to do that kind of thing, but yeah. we thought it. We thought it was awesome. Um, so the last point I'll make about Cat9K, because I know Mohammed's going to drill a lot more into this, is the fact that we have built in security, what we call trustworthy systems, throughout the solution. So one of the things we've really done here is done things like secure boot, image integrity verification, image signing to make sure the hardware and the software the platform hasn't been tampered with, right? That, that, that you can be sure that this system, which really is the heart of your network, is, is trustworthy and you can trust that it hasn't been compromised in some way. If I, one of the things I draw your attention to here is this concept of 64-bit ASLR. ASLR is address-based layout randomization. Basically is a way of preventing or making very, very difficult to execute buffer overflow attacks on a device, right? So if I overflow a buffer, into the adjacent memory, the adjacent memory is randomized throughout the, the memory structure, so it's very hard to execute a buffer overflow attack with that. We've made that 64-bit. So I'm going to sum up there, because we're out of time. Um, what I, I guess a major takeaway out of all this, what does all this mean? It really means that this combination of programmable hardware and innovations for driving in software provide flexibility and adaptability, which allows the network to evolve. It allows the network to evolve in place, so we can spend our time and our treasure creating innovations to deliver to market that customers can actually consume because it, they're implementable under hardware without necessarily having to do rip and replace. I mean, we'd love for you to, to implement Cat9K switches. Uh, they have a whole bunch of new like, additional hardware innovations because we're always adding stuff, as Peter showed with each generation. But you know, we want to provide that ability for the network to evolve. 
And what you're going to see later today is when Sean Wargo comes out and talks about software-defined access, you're going to see how we're doing that. We're evolving this concept of overlay underlay and allowing us to build out an overlay control plane based on LISP, in SDA fabric, an overlay level of encapsulation based on VXLAN, which can carry SGT tags and virtual network information end to end, really key for delivering use cases like segmentation in the environment. And the thing that we're most proud of down here is that this flexible silicon allows for adaptability. You could have bought the first 3850 off the line four and a half years ago, and you're going to be able to implement SDA on it. That's pretty cool mm. to be able to go back to people and say, you made a good investment in this product because look at all the additional stuff that I can give you. So I'll sum up by basically just saying ASICs. You can tell Peter and I get pretty excited about ASICs. <laughs> ASICs are really the foundation for products, which are foundation for solution, which is how we deliver benefits. And this flexible silicon, we believe, is a huge innovation that Cisco isn't just introducing to market. We've been shipping this for four and a half years. So where others might be out there making noise about things, we've been delivering this for, for quite some time. So it's really about innovation all the way up the stack. ASIC hardware software, I hope that's what you see throughout today, is innovation from the hardware, software, protocols, solutions. Yeah? What we call gates to GUI. And that's it. I'll stop there. Thanks, guys. Questions? If we have time. You said if you bought a 3850. Yes. Five years ago? Four and a half. Four and a half years ago. Yep. You can implement SDA on it now. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that is cool. That isn't that cool? We, you didn't even know you were making that good investment, but you know, that, that's one of the things we're very focused on. Now, we're always going to deliver new stuff in each generation, but that backwards compatibility is a critical element of what we want to provide. Other, other questions, other thoughts? We fire hosed you with a tremendous yeah. amount of information. So if you had to boil down the value in you know, custom ASICs compared yep. to merchant silicon yep. into like 30 seconds or less, sure. what, what would that be? I would say that the value of a custom ASICs is that we're able to deliver flexibility, we're able to deliver adaptability, we're able to, deliver, through that, deliver investment protection. That's what customers are going to care about the most. And this allows the innovations that we create to actually be consumable by customers. Right. As opposed to if you're on merchant silicon, if you're on fixed silicon, my message to you is always going to be, hey, I got a great new switch. Right. You need to rip and replace to get that functionality. You're developing custom ASICs to sell less switches, not more switches. Nope. We're selling custom ASICs to deliver more switches um, because we're always going to be adding new stuff with each generation. But we want to make sure that the innovations that we deliver as we make this transition to being a software-oriented company that the software innovations we deliver are consumable on all the hardware footprint that's out there. So we get maximum adoption, right? That's really key. Gotcha. That makes sense? Absolutely. So it's about, always about selling more stuff. We don't want to sell less stuff. We <laughs> want to sell more stuff. Surround. But we want to make sure that the stuff we're selling has that, that capability to adapt and evolve. So rather than doing the rip and replace, once you've got this new uh, flexible ASIC in your network, mm -hmm. upgrade, and upgrade software, get new functionality. Upgrade software, get new functionality. It changes the focus of innovation in the platform, yep. which is really key. Now that said, we're always going to deliver new ASIC functionality too yep. with, the, with each generation.